Okay, I think we are going to be able to do something now. Okay, so we switched cameras. And now we've got to get rid of the lovely music, which is beautiful, and which I don't know where it's coming from. It just kind of decided to kick in here. All right. Oh, that's because Firefox is working. Now figure out how to turn off the music, and I'm in good shape. Getting there, my um, radio station, People's Internet Radio, is down today. There it is. Bingo! We're home. We've got things moving. All right. People's Internet Radio is having some transmission problems today. And so we're just doing it here. And that's cool. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, my friends, depending where you are. Where I am, it's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on February the 1st. We made it through January 2020. I am Elizabeth Windsor Craig, and this is History Reset, brought to you each Saturday, not just by People's Internet Radio in Ireland, but also by Radio Act TV in Jerusalem, Israel. And that's because there is a common culture between the Celtic culture in ancient Britain and the Mosaic culture in in Israel today. Okay, so my hope is to bring valuable information to the public that corporate media refuse to divulge. This program is a public service, but you're welcome to please donate to People's Internet Radio and Radio Act TV to keep people's truth coming at you without commercial adverts. Okay, tonight's History Reset show is about navigating and being safe crisis to crisis. Okay, today I'm dealing with some really tactile and real problems that um, are plaguing us. Here we go. Oh my, I think I may have some more technical problems than I know about. All right, and so I'm going to have to find another route to back to my Facebook page because I'm basically going to um, be working off my timeline today. I've got all the links we need and a lot of the information right up there. And of course, the first thing I want to talk about is the um, victories that we have achieved. Victories are important. And I'll start we, the music that you were hearing was Hymn to Eternity. And the reminder I wanted to offer to everybody is that December the 21st, 2012 was supposed to have been the galactic jubilee for mankind. All debts forgiven and everyone set free. But it didn't work out that way because the rich men of the earth have refused to let go of the ancient, ancient treaties, the El Anu and the Griata and the Tau Nine that enslaved people. So here we are, seven years after the end of the galactic procession of the equinoxes, and we're still enslaved, and we haven't been set free at all. And how does that occur? How does that happen, that the rich men of the earth practice a form of problem avoidance? Well, that's because of the teachings, the metaphysical teachings of the rich men of the earth, whether they're in the Masons, the Chivalric Order, the Deep Vatican, like the Jesuits, um, or some other arcane, fifth dimensional problem solving method. All right. Remember I said that fifth dimensional problem solving is a form of white witchcraft in which you gather your coven 
and you visualize the reality that you want to manifest and you get rid of everybody who disagrees with you. Okay, that's, that's how that works for those arcane people and that's why we have the problems we have today because the rich men of the earth really are not sane in handling the problems of reality. Really, okay. But we've had some victories despite the rich men of the earth. And the first one, of course, is that Britain has got free from the diktat and tentacles of the European Union, which is cool, all right? So Britain has a whole new chance to excel. And down below, I have a short video from yesterday, day before yesterday, in which I discuss some possible actions, actions in leadership that can be taken to promote and forward problem solving in Britain that have been pretty much swept under the carpet for the last 80 years. Okay, so I won't go into those now. Okay, but I got this link this morning that just knocked my socks off. And that is HTTP Cafefe Lax Trump invokes Article 9 to begin prosecution of Democrats for treason. I, all I could say to that is, wow. <laughs> is that a wow or what? Okay, that's a wow or what, all right? And I've been searching all morning for more information about that, but I'm sure that we're going to be hearing more about that now that this impeachment scam trial is finished and the people who um, were behind it have been shown by Dan uh, Bongino to all be related and to all know each other going back a long time. Now the question that Dan, Don, Dan Bongino hasn't gotten into yet and that I've asked him and I haven't gotten a response yet is what part, what place does the senior executive service play in stonewalling and foot dragging so that the status quo is all that Congress and legislators are hanging on to. I think the senior executive service is, is going to have a lot to do with the trials of the Democrats from the perspective of uh, being involved, being involved. Next topic, the coronavirus. The coronavirus, as you know, has been manufactured. It's basically a variant of the SARS virus, which was basically a variant of the AIDS virus. And the coronavirus is being found treatable with AIDS drugs. Isn't that interesting? All right. The coronavirus, uh, July 23rd, 24th, uh, 15, the Purebright Institute, the present invention provides a life attenuated coronavirus comprising a variant replicates gene encoding polyproteins comprising a mutation in one or more of the non-structural proteins, yakata smakata. The coronavirus may be used as a vaccine for treating and or preventing a disease such as infectious bronchitis in a subject. And of course, that's what's killing people is the infectious bronchitis. And it's moving faster than SARS did. SARS kind of fizzled out as a genocide tool. All right. And the only, the, the only prophylactic we have against this kind of stuff is um, to stay away from it. <laughs> okay, stay away from it. I have an article here by Dr. Lawrence Palewski. Unvaccinated children are the healthiest children I have ever seen. Dr. Lawrence Palewski is a pediatrician trained at NYU School of Medicine and did his residence 
at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. He recently spoke at a forum on vaccines in Connecticut, discussing the repeal of the religious exemption for childhood vaccines. Dr. Pilevsky spent the first nine years of his career working in emergency rooms running a neonatal intensive care unit. Once he began his private practice, he began to hear not dozens, not hundreds, but thousands of stories from parents who took a very healthy child into their doctor's office and then found that their child lost much of his health. Whether it was their speech, whether it was seizures, whether it was death, whether it was asthma, allergies, eczema, whether it was autism, whether it was learning disabilities, whether it was inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune diseases, and every one of these parents were told it had nothing to do with the vaccine. All right? And so this is a problem. This is a big problem. We have to deal with the fact, ah, I have an idea, bingo. We're closing this one down because yeah, we don't need two of them going at the same time. All right, there we go. Now, and uh, with only German, with only German uh, instructions, I got duly confused today. All right, so onward and upward. I had two going, oh well, we'll fix this. Okay, next. All right, so our best prophylactics against the coronavirus is one, stay out of crowds. And if you can keep your children homeschooled, now would be a good time. If you can um, get out of a crowded town and live up in the in the isolated parts somehow and you're in um, with somebody you know just stay away from the cities um wash your hands all the time if you live in a highly populated area that's likely to be sprayed or chemtrailed with the coronavirus um i wouldn't let the kids play outside too much if at all <laughs> Okay, I mean, let's let's just be careful. I'm very fortunate in that I'm already sequestered. I'm already inside most of the time. I work and I have to walk to shop and this and that and the other thing, but I'm not outside enough that if they're chemtrailing, I can't duck into the house and stay in the house till the the milky air is is no longer apparent um elderberry is um a good natural remedy uh sunshine is a good na natural remedy but that's kind of hard to get in the house and lots of garlic soup you know when my second daughter was born she had a lot of problems with bronchitis and you can tell i do too and so i got this recipe from her babysitter, because I was working at Xerox at the time. It's an Italian recipe for garlic soup, and babies love it. You take a whole head of garlic, and you smash the whole thing and put it in a big, uh, about a four-quart pot with a tablespoon of salt, and you steep it as if it were tea, all right? And then... You throw in some little tiny uh, rice macaronis because the kids li like to chase those around the bowl with the spoon. And you stir in a, one scrambled egg into the whole thing soup. The babies love it. The little kids love it. When you steep garlic that way, it's very mild to the taste and it clears the phlegm. Okay. And, and so those are the simple home remedies that we have that can make a difference in getting through a winter where there's a lot of flu. For me to, to say to you, 
that I would discourage you from getting a flu shot. That has got to be the understatement of, you know, I have never had a flu shot and hell will freeze over before I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's probably the worst problem we have to deal with right now concerning our children, except for the always worry about where our kids are and are they safe. And nowadays that is a real problem. Are, where are my children and are my children safe? There's a former uh, police homicide detective, David Polites, and he tracks people who disappear in the United States. About a half a million disappear, but all but 40 to 45,000 of those people are found one way or another, all right? But 40 to 45,000 individuals in the United States disappear every year and vanish without a clue. So one of the things that parents need to worry about is where is my kid? I need to know where my kid is, right? All right. One of the things that the president just dealt with at his desk a couple days ago was he signed an executive order to give funds to people who are tracking child trafficking in the United States. And a lot of people don't know how child trafficking originated in the United States. Sorry, not now. Okay, so I'm bringing up an article how the child trafficking business or business was originated in the United States and it occurred back in the 50s. In fact, I think that when all the children had to start taking school buses rather than being allowed to walk to school anymore. That happened, what, in the 60s? Okay. That's when somebody became aware of the problem and the crime of child trafficking because now all kids have to be on these horrific school buses rather than just being allowed to walk to school. Here is an article from 2014. The CIA runs the pedophile rings. This is how they began because what the CIA has needed and what Jeffrey Epstein, who didn't kill himself, provided for them was a way to control legislators and influential people so that their vote in Congress could be predicted. Okay, so here's this article. We have, the media has been telling us about child abuse and child murders associated with such places as the Arthur G. Dozier School in Mariana in Florida, Boys Town in Omaha, particularly during the Reagan administration, Colonia Dignitad in Chile, certain children's homes and hospitals in Australia, Canada, the USA, and the UK, certain child brothels in Thailand, Cambodia, London, etc. Marc Dutro's cellars in Belgium, certain pool parties in Hollywood. Roger Dean, Kaiser founder of the White House Boys, the boys of the Arthur Dozier School. Okay. It has become clear that all of the above child abuse can be linked to the CIA and its friends. You could say that the culprits are a Zionist Nazi mafia faction within the CIA, Mossad, and the Pentagon. And let me clarify why that is coherent with other behavior, okay? Kidnapping, sex slaving, gang raping are behaviors that are characteristic of certain political ideologies, right? Okay. They existed in the Nazi Third Reich. 
they exist wherever maritime admiralty statutes permit human trafficking in social services, detentions, and uh, reparenting, in adoptions, okay, in international adoptions, particularly, you know, an international adoption can cost $25,000, okay. In the meantime, the babies that people need are aborted and aborted and aborted and aborted and aborted. This is a game that a mafia that has taken hold of the United States has been operating for profit for half a century now. And most of us would refuse to believe that it was true or that it could be. But you see, those methods are also coherent with the behaviors that are taught in the Quran. They're not the primary normal behaviors of most Muslims, but those behaviors are taught in the Quran as a way of dominating and creating protection rackets, utilizing secrecy and treachery in the Quran. It's in there, all right? Those methods, treachery, protection rackets, divide and conquer, are not in the Holy Mosaic Law, and they are certainly not in the B attitudes of the New Testament. And so it's very puzzling to me how Islam can make a claim that they, quote, worship the same God as the Jews and the Christians when the instructions about behavior that they give to their followers are so different from what real Jewish people and real Christians are taught. Now, there are Luciferian Christians who believe in freedom first, and they do whatever they want. There are people who call themselves Jews who are cultural Jews who are either secular or occult, whose tradition is the Talmud that goes back to the Babylonian Empire. And in the Babylonian Empire, you had secrecy, treachery, protection rackets, slavery, and uh, domination. Okay, that group of behaviors is all wrapped up in the imperial mindset, all right? And that imperial mindset has been present in the CIA for half a century. And it's how they control the legislators, the representatives, and the senators in Congress, see? All right? If the CIA wants to control somebody or the secretary of NATO or a top Hollywood entertainer or the president or a member of a royal family or a newspaper editor or a key employee of Google, it can supply them with young kids to play with. In order to get the system in place, the CIA has to know where children will be available to touch and abuse. And there are guidebooks. In 1964, an American called Bob Dameron published a book listing gay bars. The CIA is reported to have photographs of certain top foreign dignitaries visiting such bars. From 1969, 1970 onwards, you could buy the Spartacus guidebook, which listed the child brothels all around the world from Port-au-Prince to Pattaya. It was a very fat guidebook. It was advertised in the mainstream media and was available in larger bookshops. In other words, the security services seem to be encouraging people to buy that book, okay? So now the big question is, how on earth did the Spartacus editors know the details of all these brothels around the world? The people most likely to know all the details were the CIA and friends. The CIA has been linked to child sex trafficking and child murder and, and trauma, uh, trauma abuse worldwide. That's because they need to blackmail people. Former priest John Stamford, publisher of Spartacus, Boy Links, USA, the Spartacus Club and Spartacus International were run from Amsterdam by John Stamford, a former Roman Catholic priest from the UK. 
1995, Stanford died mysteriously in prison in Belgium, age 56. Spartacus members get a 10% discount at the Elm Guest House Boy Brothel in London. Ex-Tory minister pictured on child sex abuse video confiscated by customs. Peter Glenn Cross, commercial manager of Spartacus, helped persuade Carol Kassir to turn her Elm guest house into a boy brothel. Peter Glenn Cross reportedly set out to create a network of child brothels for Spartacus members. Customers of the Elm guest house included members of MI5 and a cabinet minister, reportedly. Elm guest house scandal, okay, coded advert that gives signals to perverts. And this, this is back to the Comet Pizza um, scandal of about three years ago during the 2016 election when the left began dreaming up a firestorm in order to protect their candidates from scrutiny. You know that. So John Stanford was responsible for exploitation of children in Thailand, Sri Lanka, the Philippines. In London, five-star accolades were given by Spartacus to uh, Richard Branson, how oh dear, Subway, Napoleon, Bolt, and the tenth. I'm not sure what that means. Okay. The details of each of the Spartacus members, including their sexual preferences, the desired age of the children and preferred countries of origin were stored on a computer. Pedophiles who prey on youngsters worldwide. An estimated 200,000 Nepalese children have been sold into sexual slavery in India. In Thailand, up to a quarter of a million children work in brothels. And in Colombia, one third of prostitutes are thought to be under the age of 14. You know, so much for allowing a child to develop emotionally, naturally, according to having a childhood free of adult conflicts, and then a puberty that allows the child to engage each issue one at a time. Child sex slavery and child marriage forced marriage of an eight or nine year old to an old man in his fifties, completely derails the natural psychological development of any child. And so there are sound psychological reasons for making 18 the age of consent for either a hand fasting partnership or holy matrimony, which is intended to found a bloodline genetic dynasty into the future. You know, there are different kinds of marriages and the worldwide media would like to slough and blow off the fact that people get married for different reasons and they want to take labels and set labels against labels. This is the, the method or the strategy of jihad is divide and conquer, uh, conquer people by dividing them in, into us versus them, okay, and setting people apart. I know in Christianity, Jesus was criticized because he openly spoke to a Samaritan woman who ostensibly wasn't supposed to speak to anybody that she hadn't been formally introduced to. And Jesus was known to speak freely to just about anybody, <laughs> okay? He was pretty wide open, all right? But in the Islamic idiom, in the Quran, the same, I don't know what you call it, prohibition, you know, something forbidden, women are not permitted to speak or hold eye contact with anyone that they haven't already been formally introduced to. And so without realizing it, all right, in common ordinary street, you know, walking down the street, looking at people, they never look you in the eye. 
They never engage you in conversation. And so that sets up a division right there, an artificial social division that becomes problematical. Now it's relieved at school because all the kids are allowed to um, interact with all the other kids, but the kids are segregated by age. And what I find in my neighborhood is that no child of any age between three and 15 will look me in the eye and say good morning. That's how our children are being socialized away from being open and friendly to other people. This is a problem. And then of course, the whole child sex trafficking matter results in an outcome in which children have no trust for anyone ever, their whole lives. And that's just plainly tragic, really tragic. And that's what the CIA's need to control the political process for themselves has created in entire societies where suspicion dominates, there's no trust even possible. Just about every society today is run like a mafia with protection rackets and vices and gambling and prostitution and the sexualizing of very young children and so we live in a very unhealthy atmosphere, spiritual and spiritually and cognitively. And so the problem with the coronavirus is almost secondary to the problem we have monitoring and keeping our thoughts toward the aims that are important to us personally, like, um, Jordan, Dr. Jordan Peterson says, if you want to have a, me a meaningful life, you have to set goals and aims for yourself and keep yourself on your own track. And what all of these vices and distractions and violence and chaos do to us and our children is throw us off track and sidetrack us every which way the mental discipline of remaining on our path to our goal and our aim is the mental discipline that will get us where we want to go. In 1955, we have the earliest recorded instance of child abuse by Sir Jimmy Seville, who is believed to have worked for the security services. In the late 50s, Seville visited Moscow. On one occasion, he gave a talk to the Israeli cabinet. He was a friend of the chief of the UK defense staff. You see, it's all wound up with security issues. We can go back at least as far as 1950 when Eisenhower, Hoover, and Edward Teller attended the Bohemian Grove in California. Bohemian Grove is where the top people meet and reportedly get involved in child abuse and worse. And who controls the Bohemian Grove? Okay, it's the House of Wetton. Okay, and um, and their uh, website, House of Wetton. Yeah, House of Wetton dot org. And um, the, the woman who runs that, she considers herself a witch, is called Somerset Belanoff. And she considers herself the boss of Bohemian Grove. She owns the uh, net uh, ownership of it. Okay. So there's a long history of top people being involved in child abuse. Now, in 1953, the U.S. government's sanctioned project MKUltra, the CIA's program to produce mind-controlled people, including child sex slaves. What I want to know is where the hell was the Department of Justice and the FBI <laughs> during that time? What were they doing? You know, what were they doing? Experiments were carried out on large numbers of children taken from children's care homes, such as Boys Town in Omaha. The MK Ultra scientists working in around 80 institutions 
included Nazi war criminals, you know, Operation Paperclip. Donald Ewan Cameron worked on the program in Canada, and William Sargent worked on the program in London. MK Ultra scientists made use of torture against children. How come it was never prosecuted? What's wrong with our law enforcement and judiciary? <laughs> okay, and that's why we cannot trust them now to um, maintain the integrity of our voting system, of our fourth estate. We don't have a fourth estate. We have a mainstream media that tells what they're told to tell, period. You know, like Pravda in the 50s. From the 1940s onward, the Arthur Dozier School in Mariana, Florida was a home for boys. It is situated near a military base and may be linked to CIA's MK Ultra mind control program. When a child is being mind controlled, he is often forced to watch the murder of another child. Excavators have discovered at least 50 bodies buried in the grounds of the school, which was shut in 2011. In 2008, the governor of Florida, Charlie Crist, was forced to launch an investigation into the hundreds of unmarked graves located at the school. Rape, torture, and murder took place at this school in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Dick Cohen said he was forced to lie face down on a blood-soaked pillow that had a small pieces of lip, tongue, and skin from the previous boy's beating. Colin recalls looking through this steamed up window of a tumble dryer in the school laundry and seeing a black boy inside churn churning around and round. In the 50s and 60s in Northern Ireland, there was a Nazi style abuse of children in children's care homes. One former resident says he was in a chain gang polishing fours, bathed in detergent as punishment and sexually assaulted by a woman when he was aged five or six. Church-run hellhole homes were like Nazi concentration camps, children forced to eat their own body, and so on and so forth. The top Zionists and the top Nazis worked together. And that's because the imperial mindset drives the belief in specialness and the belief that we're better than other people. So wherever you have a, a group that's talking about we're better, you know, there's us and them, okay? We have to correct the world. That's where you're dealing with the imperial mindset. And that's where the behavior deteriorates into Satanism and cruelty and uh, barbarism, savagery, all right? So what, what hope do we have? of keeping our children free from this. We have to keep our children close by. We need to pray over our children and we need to teach our children to pray for their future. Because if they don't pray for their future and if you don't pray for their future, you're not in attunement with the covenants that exist here on this world. Now the covenants, is something that don't get discussed from the perspective of the ET, atheist, agnostic, okay. What's clear from the record in the Bible is that God, Yahweh, appeared as a burning bush and he appeared as a cloud. And what I have learned since then is he is an ET being that is known as a sylph, S-Y-L-P-H, okay, which means he looks like a light bulb with a snake inside of it, and the snake is the, um, is what lights up, and then it, and it expands. That's how a sylph works. So Yahweh the sylph came here about 27,000 years ago, to repair this world from the collision it had been in. And I talk about this, but the, our historians are about 20,000 years behind the power curve 
they're still babbling dogma and doctrine about humankind being only 6,000 years ago. And before that, we were Stone Age people and we didn't know anything and we weren't, we weren't socialized and we didn't have any technology. One of the things we can do to guard ourselves and our children is to guard what we know by making certain that what we know is true. <laughs> that is so hard to do. That is so hard to do. Because you know and I know history isn't 6,000 years old. And you know and I know ETs have been here all along, the UFOs. And you know and I know that anytime you're in an airplane and you look out the window, the horizon is flat. Okay, it's flat. Now, why it's flat, I'm not even going to go into that. All right, it's not a pizza, okay? It's not a pizza, but it's not curved. And every time you look up at the moon, if you happen to have a video camera and you shoot up at the moon and you zoom up to it, you can just about get to the surface of the moon. Now, how can the moon be 226,000 miles away? No way it can't. Okay. And the sun, okay, that sprays, sprays light all over the place. Can it be 93 million miles away? No way. Because its rays are not parallel. They're all splayed out and sprayed out. So it has to be local. Okay. So what we're taught about the sun and the moon is wrong. What we're taught about the flatness of the horizon is wrong. What we're taught about our history is wrong. What we're taught about law is that it's all twisted together between common laws and maritime admiralty laws. And your birth certificate means you're a piece of your consumable product. And I mean, there's all this confusion about it. All right. What we are told about planets and asteroids and moons and stuff by NASA, I have found from personal experience, doesn't match what's in the pictures. Okay, their stories don't match reality. The Challenger did not blow up in 1986. The crew is still alive and they're all working in academia. Okay, we are not told the truth about very much. And that's the truth. And that's what we, we as parents and grandparents have to confront is that so much of our culture is based on secrecy, treachery, mafia tactics, protection rackets, and divide and conquer. Where do we go for a way out of this mess? Do you know? You know? What do you do? Well, <clears throat> I've tried for years to snuggle up to the church. But the church, having been developed during the Enlightenment, is still obsessing and harping and talking about their theories and hypotheses and opinions and doctrines and dogmas and beliefs, the beliefs, the beliefs, the beliefs. And as if the thoughts that are banging around in your head bone are what defines your reality, which is not true. It's not true. What defines your reality is what you say to people, how you treat them. What defines your reality is the work that you do to create something that is a benefit to somebody. What you do is what creates history, not what you think. So all of the thinkers and all of their thinking and all of their theories and all of their opinions and all of that yakata smackata, the talking about talking about talking about talking about talking. Okay. And we've just been through that. We've just been through two weeks of, that, of an impe impeachment in which the president's behavior was never examined. They never found a harm 
to anybody that he ever did. They never found a crime, a, an act of behavior, an action, a, a, you know, who did he hit? <laughs> Nobody, okay? It was all about the process of talking about talking about talking, okay? And this is where the deception occurs in the talking about talking. So what happens in the Episcopal Church where I am a member and I go to the service and it comes out of the prayer book and they're all talking about, talking about, talking about, talking about, talking and they're reciting and reading and the old thing over and over and over again. And they're saying the same, you know, they're going through this liturgy and litany over and over again. And you go, oh my God. <laughs> Let's please get real. Now, when they get to the homily, okay, they talk about a specific principle of behavior that Jesus called for in his Beatitudes. And his Beatitudes are truly helpful. I don't, it doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. The Beatitudes of Jesus actually work because there is a principle. What goes around comes around. Whatever you send out is what you get back. If you send out blame, guess what? It's coming back at you. Okay? Whatever curse you send out comes back. Whatever profane language you send out comes back. Okay, and this is why profane language becomes a problem. All right, so this is where... <clears throat> we can cut the connection to the bullshit. And we can stop talking <laughs> about talking. <laughs> we can stop talking about talking about talking and theories and hypotheses and lemmas and, and um, uh, you know, the academics just go on and on and on and on. The truth of the matter is we build our world by our actions and the results and the effects and the outcomes of our actions. We build our world one brick at a time. And that's a good way to do it. Because then you know how many bricks you need and you know how much mortar, mortar you need, okay? You know how many hours it's gonna take because you're dealing with a reality that's not merely verbal. One of the things that I've been talking and asking God about has been the cognitive, different cognitive styles of people. You know, um, Jordan Peterson talks about this too. And one of the things I've noticed about the race that I appear to belong to, the white race, is that they head trip. <laughs> they head trip. Yakety, 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 yakety. Okay, and, and God love him. Jordan Peterson does it just as well as anybody. He can go on. He can go on and on and head trip about all the intricate connections between cognition and emotion and outburst and emotion and outcome. Okay, he can do that. But everybody doesn't think with their brain. One of the reasons I have found myself to be quite odd is that I don't think that way. I don't work that way. All right. My brain is in use as a sensory and data input device. It's the monitor that I observe to see whether a thought makes any sense at some other level. All right. I don't I mean, I can think, I can follow a recipe. Okay, I can. It's painful, but I can. It's not my natural way. All right, to to follow a recipe. That that to me, I, I you know, if all else fails, you follow the directions. All right, and and that's why the, the having my whole Facebook page uh, now done in German <laughs> just oh my god, haven't been able to figure out how to fix that. Okay. But there are other races that respond differently. And this idea may be helpful. Okay. I have found that people of the black race think with their heart. They, they emote immediately. And the head tripping comes later. 
I have found that people of races in the East and, you know, um, in Asia and, and other world, you know, other places, if you look at the cultures that are very confining and very demanding socially, they, they think with their gut and they're very angry a lot of the time. Okay. My, um, stepfather okay came from an italian an italian background and his family were all furious most of the time and the bolshevik family the extended family that i was fostered into were like that they were very angry people most of the time that was how they got energy into their lives all right so you can be you can be doing your, figuring things out in your head or in your heart or in your gut or at your base chakra. And if you do it at your base chakra, you're a reptilian, you're a reptile, okay? And that's my cognitive style, okay? I reason at the base chakra and then I call up all the information I had to support what I thought. All right. And so it's quite legitimate to say that the bloodline of the British, the British monarchy operates in a way that's different from normal people. All right their intuitive faculty and their head tripping are very advanced but at the heart some they're quite often broken at the gut they're quite often angry and if they adopt the reptilian way of thinking they can be damn dangerous because they're so quick they're like a snake, a snake bite. And I found that just realizing that the different cognitive styles that people experience has helped me to back away and back off and give more space to others in their energy. They're struggling with their own energy because I'm struggling with my energy to try to keep it on an even keel keeping energy on an even keel i that's something we can get into too is keeping energy on an even keel i'm using a tone generator now and trying different tones to see what helps me to gather my you know kind of gather myself together to get things done and i have found that eating less the older i get the less of food i need okay and the more careful I have to be about what it is that I'm putting in my mouth, right? These matters are not trivial and they need a lot of personal attention. And this is why I believe the retirement age of 65 is very appropriate because after the age of 65, having the opportunity to stop all the commerce and stop all the trading and stop all the networking to get to work for other people, you have the opportunity in solitude and in silence and in experiencing the outcomes you create for yourself, okay? You have the opportunity to school yourself in how to be better and how to proceed with your aim, with your goal, with your objective in your life. And as you know from my history, my life aims, goals, and objectives have been confounded by all this drama and all this stuff going on. And it's still not completely resolved. And so I'm a lot like a person who's uh, 18 years old and wondering what's in store for me now. And I think that's okay. I hope you think that's okay. And so, uh, guess what? We've, 
I've done it. I've done, let's see, have I co covered everything I said I was going to cover? Oh, no, one more thing I want you to look at. Uh, on my timeline, there's a bright eon link I want you to look at. And, and it's about racism in the United States and who did what to whom to pursue the racist agenda and destroy the, the black family in the United States, to destroy everybody's family. Who did it? Who did it? Who destroyed families in the United States? Pick up that bright eon link. It's just a short, just a short comment by a very, very intelligent black man. I have to, here, here. <laughs> I have to really respect and like a person who knows how to stand up for himself. And this man does that very well. We all have to learn to stand up for what? What? What are we going to stand up for? Our children are taught in school that there's nothing worth standing up for except somebody else's religion that we never comment about. We never comment about, which I just really don't understand this. The United States, here's, a, here's an article. I don't understand why this is still happening in the United States. Uh, U.S. government hands out tens of millions to Muslim organizations linked to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. And the reason I don't understand it is because the Quran teaches takia, which is deceit, double dealing, secrecy, jizya, which is protection rackets and us versus them, and jihad, which is domination and manipulation to the point of conquest. I don't understand why our government is promoting and pursuing a political ideology that is seditious at its very basis. I'm sorry, I don't get it. Maybe some of you can explain that to me. And so uh, this has been a History Reset today. We've covered some stuff. And thank you for coming by and letting me do my rant and raving. Yes, I can rave. Brexit is done, and now Britain has the opportunity to excel. And the impeachment is done, and President Trump has the opportunity to go after the deep state. Okay, so some good things are happening, and we must be vigilant, and we will get through this. And we will not all be victims of the coronavirus, nor of the chemtrails, nor of the fluoride in the water, any of that rot. Say your prayers. Pray over your children. And love the universe so you can be part of it. This has been Emily Craig. See you next week. Bye-bye.